There's no need to wait on your service member to share secondhand information anymore. Welcome to Holding Down the Fort, a podcast show where we put military spouses and children's needs front and center so that they can make informed decisions together as a family. Because let's face it, we know who's really holding down the fort. Let's get started. All right. Hi, everyone. Jen Amos here with Holding Down the Fort podcast show. I am super excited to be doing this episode today because we are introducing you Madison Lang, who is an Air Force girlfriend, and she's going to be sharing a little bit about her story. And typically on the show, we have uh, brought on like experts and people to give very particular advice to the military community. But I thought this would be a special episode where we actually share the story of, you know, a military spouse uh, or potential military spouse, however you want to call it, and what they're going through and what they're doing to make it work with their service member. So Madison, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's uh, my absolute pleasure. Uh, Why don't we start with uh, you sharing, how did you hear about the podcast show? And more importantly, why did you decided to share your story on our show today? So I heard about it when I found you guys on Instagram after you had followed me and were keeping up with my posts. And when I found the first episode, I told my boyfriend, I was like, you know, this is a really good outlet for not just spouses, but like even girlfriends, because they don't really have as much help as actual spouses do, because they're not considered important, I guess, Mm -hmm. is a way to say it. Yeah, it's like you're not on paper yet. It's not yes, official exactly. yet. exactly. And even yeah. so, whether you end up ever being on paper, you know, because it just depends on people's choices, like there's still, it's still really difficult to be in a, a relationship with someone in the military. It's a very yes. unique, it's one thing to be in a long distance relationship, but it's another thing to be with someone who's in the military because, mm-hmm. you know, they could be w- with people in the military. You just, you just never know things change so rapidly and you're constantly thinking like, okay, are they going to come back home to me? Is there going to be a war? <laughs> like, is <Yep>. anything, <laughs> anything going to happen? And it's so, you know, because there's nothing on, on paper yet or what have you, like, you're kind of like, what do I do in my situation for someone that is still dating and nothing is set in stone. So I I think it's really cool how uh, you wanted to be a part of this podcast. I actually had someone who is new and young uh, in the military. It's it's a young military family and they felt like they weren't qualified to be on the show. And I was like, well, you know, it's your choice at the end of the day. I'm not going to force anyone to be on the show, Mm -hmm. but you know, it's unfortunate that they already discredited themselves. Yeah. When, you know, especially when you're new and young in the military, it would be very, there's, there's a story in that. And there's some lessons to learn in that. And there's, Mm -hmm. everyone's in a different stage when it comes to their affiliation or involvement with the military. So, you know, once again, I just want to thank you for wanting to be on our show. Of course. I'm so excited. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. So why don't we talk a little bit about, you know, you and how you met your service member and how long have you two been together? So I moved to Texas in the beginning of August of last year, and I knew nobody. So me being the college girl that I am, I downloaded Tinder. (laughs) Nice, Um, nice. That's real though. That's real. That happens nowadays. (laughs) Oh, yes. And he had just gotten back from his deployment, and that was when, like, we matched. And so Mm -hmm. we had been talking on and off kind of just as friends and like saying, Oh, like, I hope you have a good day, those kinds of things. And for the longest time, I thought that he did not like me because (laughs) he never answered any of my messages. And then I eventually found out that it was just because he can't have his phone Mm -hmm. on him when he's in the office because of what his job is. So I was like, okay, that makes more sense. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. And we went on our first date in October of last year and started dating the 17th of October. So almost 11 months we've been together. Aw, 
That's yeah. really awesome. <laughs> you know, it's it's funny how you mentioned that because I had a good friend who was dating um, a service member and one of her number one uh, complaints was that he wasn't responsive. And one thing mm-hmm. that one thing that you ha- we have to understand about the military is that it's not that they mean to ghost us or be unresponsive. It's that a lot of times their job requires them to not be near their phone, <laughs> you know? Yep, so, exactly. <laughs> and so it's not like it's not like a regular maybe corporate job where you work in the office, you could just ha- have your phone next to you and watch mm-hmm. YouTube videos and, you know, be online and stuff like that. So, um, yep. so I think that's a common thing that for anyone that is interested in uh, pursuing someone in the military to know that they're literally not allowed to be on their phones at certain times while they're in duty. So they're really good to know. And in for anyone that feels like they're struggling in that way, just know that it's, it's not necessary you it's, you can blame the military. <laughs> for, it's, yeah, it's the military most definitely. <laughs> for, yeah, for the unresponsiveness. So, well, yeah. awesome. So when we first reached out to you, I know at the time we found your blog entry about how to deal with someone you love being overseas. And uh, at that time you were working as a nanny and, and doing other things to keep busy. Uh, I, would, I would love to hear about like your life today and what it, what it looks like as, as your service member is overseas. Mm -hmm. So I'm still a nanny. I nanny for a family in the military also. Mm. So working with them also kind of helps keep me grounded, I guess, in a way. And just knowing that, like, it's not the end of the world. Now that I'm in school, I do, I have class and then I go straight to work. And with it being class different times and different days, I typically will get up extremely early for no reason at all, just to make sure that my day goes as I want it to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I do, I have, I have even call me at his, during when he goes to lunch so that I wake up on time and then I'll get up and I usually help my mom in the mornings just to make sure that the boys go to school on time. And then it's me time until class and I go to class, I come home, I start working on homework, and then Ethan gets off work around 10 o'clock my time, and I call him when he gets home, and I'm on the phone with him until I get to work. Nice. So that's like a good chunk of my time. We are extremely spoiled with the fact that he's not deployed, so I don't know how it's going to work when he gets deployed, because I'm going to remember the time that I didn't have to deal with that. <laughs> All right, now we're going to take a quick break to introduce one of our sponsors. Let's get real. The government, our education system, the financial industry, and corporations are focused on the masses. They don't have your best interest in mind. You need to take responsibility of your future and stop following orders when it comes to your personal finances. The first step is to stop focusing on money and focus on your true purpose. Wealth is achieved by those who are following their passions. It's a mindset shift from scarcity to abundance. There's no better time in human history to use the liberty you fought for to live a life of meaning. U.S. Vet Wealth was founded by a West Point graduate who became disillusioned by the government benefits and traditional financial planning advice that is decades behind the times. Our clients recognize us as the only trusted financial resource able to educate them on the full spectrum of opportunities available to veterans today. By thinking beyond the standard financial advice of buying a home, sending kids to college, and retiring, we help the 1% who serve our country become the 1% who influence it. See if you qualify for a wealth and liberty strategy today. Simply visit usvetwealth.com. That's U.S. as in the United States, vet, short for veteran, wealth.com, usvetwealth.com. Yeah, definitely. I th- I think you're in a really good place that you can be able to communicate with him as uh, frequently as you do. Because I um I had a uh, multiple friends. Like I was a, a military child, and like fast forward to today, I'm I call myself a veteran spouse because I met my husband uh, after his service. But I have a lot of peers who also decided to join the military, and when they do get deployed you know, really the only way to get a hold of them is you either send them letters or you send them emails, but they're really just out for weeks and months at a time and you really can't communicate with them. So, yeah. you know, so really good to cherish these moments while <laughs> while you have them. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So what is that? Uh, what does Ethan do over in Germany right now? He is in logistics. Hmm. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So he's got the big office 
job. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Office job. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So he could be on his phone. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I mean, if he was, I don't think any work would get done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, def- definitely, definitely. Well, let's go ahead and, and talk about just the lifestyle that you're living with him, which is a this a lo- this long distance relationship. Mm-hmm. And I know you mentioned uh, in your blog, which if anyone's interested, it's the word of And in her, she has a blog entry called dealing with someone you love uh, being overseas. And initially, you were kind of explaining it as if you're, uh, you didn't mean to say it this way. But you're like, let me tell you how I put up with this lifestyle. But it's not really mm-hmm. putting up with it. It's more like how have you adapted to this lifestyle. And so yeah. there's a couple of ways that you have done that. And for anyone that uh, is about to enter a long distance relationship, or you're already in one, and you're looking for some advice or just reassurance that to keep the relationship alive and know that you're doing the right things to keep it going. Why don't you share some ways that you and Ethan have kept your relationship alive and keep it going, especially since, you know, even though you've been together for 11 months, like it sounds like you both have really uh, collaborated (laughs) into making the relationship (laughs) work. So why don't, why don't you share that with us today? So when he first found out he was leaving, we'd only been dating for about three months. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just like sprung on us. And when I was thinking about writing this blog post. I was thinking about the fact that there's not really anybody who talks about this kind of stuff. And if they do, they're not really in a relationship that like I'm in. Mm -hmm. And they're not going through something where you can't just go see them whenever you want. It's one of those things where you're like, I actually have to wait. So we FaceTime literally every single day, all day. And it keeps the fights, it keeps the happiness, like it keeps everything in there because I mean, you get mad because FaceTime cuts out and you're like, what did you say? (laughs) And then it turns into a huge fight because you're like, you heard me say this. And then it just, it happens every single day, but that's part of what happens. And Mm -hmm. you can't really get mad about that. And so we do that. We make sure that we say good night and good morning every single day. And typically it's me saying good morning to him and him saying good night to me. And that's just something that's worked for us for the last however many months it's been. And I think that it's really important to be able to do that because if you don't do that, it kind of just sets your whole day off. Mm. And I have had care packages planned for this boy since before we even knew he was going. And I think that they're a fun way to like brighten someone's day if something bad happened and they're like, oh, I have a package. And then it's just this huge package of all kinds of stuff that they don't get over there. And he'll send me his clothes, like his shirts and his hoodies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of just turned into this little game of, well, who's going to send it next? Because we keep a journal, which his aunt and uncle have given us this idea. And I think it's the greatest idea anybody has ever given us because Basically, we're just writing letters, but we write multiple at a time and then ship it to each other. And we read those and then we write letters back and then ship it back. So it's kind of just like a keepsake kind of thing. Instead of having multiple pieces of paper, we have a journal for it so we can archive it in a way. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is that you, instead of sending letters, you have like this journal that you mail back and forth as if you're... Mm -hmm kind of continuing the conversation that's so cool I've never heard of that it's a great idea yeah his aunt and uncle the day I met them they told us about it because his uncle had deployed or he was PCSing overseas and they had just started dating so they were kind Mm. of in the same boat that we are and so they told us about this and I looked at them and I was like that's a genius idea and so we ended up doing it Yeah. So listeners, if you are in the same situation or you're about to be in the same situation, consider getting a journal that you can mail back and forth to your service member. Uh, I think that's a brilliant idea. And Mm -hmm. if anyone else is doing that, uh, feel free to let us know, uh, reach out to us. We have information in the show notes of how to get a hold of us, but we'd love to hear if you are doing it, how has it been working for you? And if you have any more tips on that, Uh, but brilliant idea. (laughs) I just never heard Mm -hmm. of that. 
<laughs> for. So you do FaceTime. I like how you are always doing saying good morning and good night. You know, one thing that my husband and I do is we just automatically say I love you to each other at any moment we mm-hmm. get, even if I just go upstairs. I'm like, hey, I'm going upstairs, love you. You know, and yeah. um, <laughs> I think just being able to check in like that, like to make it normal to reassure someone that you love them. Uh, when yeah. when the problems really do come up, it's like you remember that you're grounded and, and you remember like, yeah, like we do love each other. And so that these conversations, they won't be as difficult, I think, because if if you kind of have all that, if you don't do that, then like these issues start to accumulate and then you feel neglected. But the last thing you will do is feel neglected if you, you know, do a routine of saying good morning and good night. So I think that's really awesome that you and Ethan do that. Mm hmm. Yeah, well, that's really cool. So we, uh, we talked a little bit about your life and Ethan, and some advice for anyone that is in a long distance relationship, especially with a service member. Madison, is there anything else you want to share with us? Any other tips or just things you want to share with our listeners today? Just remembering that it's not forever. And I say this almost every single day. Even if it's a deployment, it's not it's a set amount of time. I mean, yes, it changes all the time. But they come and go, and they're not going to last for your entire life. And I have to remember that, especially with Ethan and him wanting to do this for an extended period of time. We're going to do long distance multiple times, but they're going to end and then start again. So you have that time with them for it to be just you two. So just remembering that it's not forever is something really big that I've been needing to remind myself every single day. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. Uh, Sometimes when things get really hard and you feel really lonely or what have you, it's easy to think Mm -hmm. that that's kind of, you you, you kind of think that's like what the rest of your life will look like. But as we know, with a lot of people in the military, uh, they all eventually get out or they end up getting stationed somewhere where the family can live. And so I, you know, to me, Madison, it sounds like you just have such a positive outlook on all of this and your relationship with Ethan. And um, it sounds like you've been very proactive with maintaining and managing, uh, nurturing, really nurturing the relationship, I think is a better way to describe it. Um, Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I just want to thank you so much for sharing a little bit about your life today and, you know, your relationship with Ethan and some advice for us. Uh, For people that do want to reach out to you and maybe ask for advice or just connect with you overall, how can they do that? Definitely by my Instagram I mean, that's really the only way that I communicate with people, honestly, <laughs> is my Instagram. <laughs> yes, that's how we met. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Yes. And you can all find uh, Madison on Instagram at Madison and 16. And I'll be sure to have that in the show notes. So uh, with that said, Madison, I want to thank you so much for your time today on our show. I'm sure our listeners are going to benefit from this conversation. And listeners, as I said, if you want to get a hold of her, that'll be in the show notes. So Madison Lang, I want to thank you again so much for sharing your story. I want to thank you for our listeners. Uh, for listening in and we look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Take care now.